Hey guys, how are you? Cheers. All right. So what was the biggest mistake I've made in my coding and my tech entrepreneur career? It's probably going to surprise you. See, I just did a little camera change to get your attention. It's a little lizard wizard technique, link below. So I've been an entrepreneur my entire adult life since I was 18 years old. And I'll just jump to the point. The biggest mistake I made was retiring early. But one caveat in regards to that, maybe because of personal circumstances, it wasn't a mistake. But I think it was a mistake. So I started my first company when I was 18, had nothing to do with technology, import, export, rare fish, water purification products, uh, natural and synthetic ion exchange resins, frozen food, dry food, nothing to do with information technology. But I did learn how to code in the early 90s to put up a website for my business. As I've told before, one day in 1994, my brother comes in and says, hey, Steph, you should put up a website for your business. And I said, what's a website? It was that early on. Anyhow, so uh, through the machinations and the ups and downs of life and business, I was able to, at a very young age, like about 30 years old, to essentially hang up my nerd hat, hang up my keyboard and mouse. And uh, I had much more savings than any of my contemporaries, like way more than anybody else at that point in time. And I had set up a passive income circumstance that was quite, uh, had, had divergent income streams, which is very, very good to do, very safe to do. And uh, so I was like, you know, I wasn't super rich or anything, but I was very, very comfortable, way ahead of my contemporaries in terms of savings. And I didn't have to work. So I said, you know what? I'm out of here. So I kind of went into a semi-semi-retirement. A semi-retirement. What does that mean? My workload dropped down to an hour, two hours a week, maybe. I don't know. It depends. And I did this for about 10 years. I was a professional coffee getter in the morning. My main task every morning was to figure out who I could get to go for coffee. I had a conundrum. I had a problem back in those days. And the problem was that I wasn't wealthy enough to be a jet setter. I couldn't get in my private jet and fly to Hawaii or uh, go to Southern California for the weekend. I wasn't there. But I was also in a position where I didn't have to work. And in fact, I didn't work but all people, all the people my age who weren't bums, they were working full time. So it's kind of a weird situation to be in. Now, the reason I decided to hang up my nerd hat is because a few years prior, in my late teens and early 20s, I had gotten, well, I got a deadly blood disease. And this deadly, deadly blood disease, the chronic state of it, the acute state of it, of it rather, meaning the, the full brunt of it, Lasted about a year, year and a half, in the hospital twice a week, massive doses of steroids and other chemicals. And um, yeah, when I was hospitalized, when they first found out about the disease, they thought I wasn't, they weren't sure if I was going to make it through the night, that type of thing. You know, minor thing where if you fall asleep, you might bleed in the brain and you're dead. So it was that kind of thing. So when I got to that point, I forget how I was like 30 or 32, something like that. I was in a position where I really didn't have to work. I said to myself, you know what? I almost died a few years ago. I'm just going to take her ease because I didn't know if I was going to come back or not. Because I, let's say I got it, I think it was either 18 or 19. So about a year and a half, I was in the hospital twice a week, massive steroids. I was able to uh, effectively cure myself through the use of non-traditional methodologies, Chinese herbs, working with a traditional Chinese uh, medical doctor from Beijing, no less, Dr. Yu. Saved my life. But for several years afterwards, I still had lingering side effects or lingering symptoms of the illness uh, beyond my platelet count. And that had to do with extreme, extreme fatigue, like almost getting like mono or something. And there would be points where I would be uh, unable to function for perhaps a week meaning hard to get out of bed in the morning. Like very tired, like uh, a fatigue 
that you feel right on the bones. Anyhow, so that's one of the main reasons, actually the main reason I decided, you know what, I have an opportunity here of 30, 32, might as well just do nothing. And I did that for about a decade, and then I got, I was just getting more and more bored. I would dabble here and there, don't get me wrong, yeah, just put a few bucks here, put a few bucks there. And then I said, you know, that's it, I got to get out of this, I'm bored, you know, and uh, so I started jumping back in, slowly back into business, but you know, when you're out of the game for 10 years, psychologically, it's difficult to sort of restructure your, ment your, your thinking and to start jump back into the whole thing again. So, but I did. And, you know, slowly, slowly, month after month, I started getting back into it, started doing different things and exploring different business opportunities. I have to tell you, you know, in business, even with all the skills in the world, uh, you, there's persistence that is required. There's a certain amount of luck. There's always luck. There's good strategy that has to be implemented. And you're going to have a lot of failures. And you have to expect a lag time as well. You may have a great business idea, but it may take years before it actually takes off, even though it's legitimate. So I, I know that from my own experience, multiple occasions, different sectors. So it's not like I've only done one business my entire life. I've tried, uh, I was in the pet products business, frozen food, water purification, uh, importing and uh, soft manufacturer, essentially. Uh, then technology, freelance, web design studio, Studio Web, my site, which is now an educational platform. It was actually my web design studio, Studio Web. Now I changed my old web design studio, which I used to call it iDesign. But then when I started hiring people, I changed it to Studio Web. Uh, web Design Studio, right? You can check it up. 1998, I registered that name. So I've been through all kinds of different uh, iterations, different types of businesses and so forth. So I look back and I say to myself, you know, when I was in my 30s and I was at my, uh, I was very, very sharp, full of piss and vinegar and energy, I, I think perhaps maybe, it, maybe it would have been wiser to execute on ideas. I had all kinds of business ideas all kinds of different uh, opportunities that presented themselves. That was the time I should have done it, maybe. I don't know. It's hard to say. It's not like I'm, I'm suffering now, trust me. But I think back and I go, hmm, did I leave too many opportunities on the table when I was at the coffee shops 